Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. This is kind of a video of opportunity because recently I seem like I get this question an awful lot. So I figured I would put it into video form so when people ask me this question, I can just say, uh, shoot them a link. Say, hey, watch this video. You'll have your answer. And the question is, what's your favorite tops knife? Only this year did I really start getting into tops. Uh, a couple years ago, looking at them, I thought, those knives look pretty crazy because there was a lot of really big you know like fighting evil evil robot dragons type knives it's like wow that thing is big and I've had a whole bunch of tops knives some of them I've traded sold off to get other things other ones I've kept and I have absolutely no intention of trading so these are my top four tops knives in no particular order and I'll go through them but first I want to point out we keep having this discussion online, on YouTube, on Facebook, and all this stuff. Uh, due to different teachers and people that are out there and opinions, which there's a million different opinions, about bushcraft knives and what a knife needs to have. And I keep going back and forth on this. I, I don't ever really stay rigid on one particular opinion because I'm open-minded. I guess if you were trying to do a traditional bushcraft type kit with minimal equipment, you would want a knife that does all these things all the time. I generally don't do that. So I don't need my knives to do those things all the time because I have multiple tools that can do all the tasks that I need. So I'm not rating these knives on do they meet all these bushcraft criteria or anything like that. I'm just rating them on what I think about them. Uh, how good they perform, just the overall craftsmanship, cool factor, uh, how easy it is to sharpen them, so on and so forth. So here's my top four tops knives. Starting with the largest one that I currently have, the Tahoma Field Knife. Now of course this looks nothing like what you get out of the package because I like this knife enough and it was designed by a friend of mine, Andy Tran, that I commissioned Godspeed Tactical to make me a custom Kydex sheath for it. This knife was designed to be a one tool option by Andy Tran. The only difference with mine as opposed to how they normally come is mine has a false edge. I did not want that sharp upper edge on my knife. But I can do just about anything with this knife. It's a comfortable knife. You can put it in a lot of different hand positions. Andy's taken this thing everywhere and been able to do everything with it. He's currently got videos uploading right now on his channel, Inner Bark Outdoors, where he went down to Columbia, I think. I don't know, somewhere in the Amazon with Joe Flowers from Bushcraft Global. And he used this knife all the time down there. This is a knife. This is a survival knife. This is a knife you can trust. So that's the first one, the Tahoma Field Knife. This next knife is one that is a favorite among a lot of people, and that is the Brothers of Bushcraft Fieldcraft Knife. Now this is my original sheath, which I just cannibalized some parts off of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the D-ring off of this and revert it to its original configuration. But on this particular bob, I went ahead and stripped the coating and took this to the belt grinder at Survival Tactics and gave it a nice sharp 90 degree spine. So I tried to make this knife fit all of those criteria. And the one complaint I had about it is the shango notch just does not seem to work easily enough. So as I pointed out in a couple videos, I did a slight modification with my Dremel tool and now this thing strikes ferro rods very, very easily. I love the grind on this. I love the weight, the balance. This is an outstanding knife. Enough so that I actually have two of them. The other one I have in the black canvas micarta and I commissioned Justin Wolf of Wolf Customs to make me a leather scout sheath for it so I could wear it horizontally on the front. This one I did not strip. Haven't done, haven't used this this particular one all too much. As you can see, it doesn't have a lot of wear on it. I generally beat up the other one. 
so I have one nice one in pristine condition. But I do prefer, even though I like G10, and you gotta clean micarta, I do prefer the micarta scales on the tops bob. It's just slightly thicker, more comfortable, gives you a nice purchase on it. But being 1095 high carbon steel and differentially heat treated so that the edge is harder and will hold its edge longer, this being slightly over 100 bucks, it's an excellent, excellent option. Now the third uh, favorite knife from Topps that I got is one of my more recent acquisitions, and that is the Topps Silent Hero, which again, this, was, this knife was cool enough that I commissioned a Kydex sheath for it, and this one I got from Doug at Yellowhawk Custom Kydex. And it is just, this comes with a leather sheath. It doesn't come with a, a, a the usual nylon sheath. It's like, uh, what the hell is that stuff called? I can't remember. But even though I had some small gripes about this knife, mostly being the handle, I wish the handle was a little bit thicker. I wish uh, it didn't have the Rocky Mountain tread. Other than that, this knife is freaking awesome. I absolutely love the blade shape. I love the grind. I love the choil, just the different hand positions. This knife is great. A lot of people, I've been told, get turned off by the handle. I'm hoping that Topps has a conversation with the designer because Topps doesn't make the decisions on how the handles are. The designers do. So hopefully they will talk to the designer and offer a thicker, smoother handle scale version, at which point this knife would be outstanding. What's nice about this knife, in my opinion, is not only does it do a lot of the survival tasks well, but I feel that this would also serve well as a combat knife. And as I have pontificated in some videos here recently, I believe it was in my uh, Jessica the Bushcraft 7 video, and also Becky uh, the Bushcraft 9, I like that those knives were originally designed as combat knives, but they serve a survival knife purpose. Because, let's face it, in survival, what are you surviving? It's not just hypothermia and starvation. You could be fighting for your life against bad people, hungry animals, I don't know what. So being able to effectively use your knife in an offensive manner, I think that should come into consideration when choosing a survival knife. And with this drop spear point design and this elongated handle, if I was back in the military and I wasn't a squid, I was a marine or a soldier or something like that, this would probably be on my short list of knives to choose. So, really can't say enough about the top silent hero. It's a cool knife. Now lastly, I have a knife which was the knife that first caught my eye when I went out to SHOT Show last year to see uh, Meat Tops for the first time. It's the Tex Creek XL. And they did send me one. They sent me a Tex Creek XL and they sent me a Tex Creek to test and review. Because I was so busy and I wanted to have one really, really good looking video for these guys, better than what I'm capable of doing, I actually subcontracted this knife out to Andy Tran and sent it to him since he had just given me a uh, Tahoma field knife. So I didn't get a lot of trigger time with this particular knife, but I recently made a series of trades and I reacquired one that was in practically new condition. And here's what I found, which is, I might have mentioned this in the past when people asked me about it. Because I didn't get this knife alongside the regular Tex Creek, funnily enough, if that's a word, funnily, I don't think it is, funny enough, I like this a lot better than I did before, and here's why. The Tex Creek and the Tex Creek XL have the exact same handle. The only difference is one has a bigger blade. Because I had both knives, the Tex Creek felt more natural and it made the Tex Creek XL feel a little bit weird to me. 
I no longer have the Tex Creek. Uh, it was given away in a Prepared Mind 101 giveaway. But now that I only have this, suddenly this doesn't feel weird to me anymore. So, suddenly this feels pretty freaking good. I love the handle. And you know how I'm a stickler for handles. It's It's got a kind of a clear coat to the micarta, so it's got a little bit of a shine to it. But it's nice and smooth. It's ergonomic. It's comfortable. It's got a good sweep of the blade. It's just the right size. And it's not too heavy. I've been EDCing this knife for the past two weeks. It comes with a leather sheath, which I did a wet mold on it to give it more grip because it didn't have a lot of grip uh, when the sheath was in its ori original configuration. But since I molded it, it's got a almost kydex type lock into the sheath. I also don't like sheaths like this being where they ride up on your hip. So what I did is I took a belt loop off another knife, used to be on my bob sheath, made a loop with paracord through there, and then I actually glued these snaps. So you have to take off your belt to put this on. But there's no way this is coming apart. So I drop the sheath down just a little bit and it becomes a dangler so it's not rigid. Now I love this knife. I'm actually planning to do a full field test of my own because the original video that I did for this channel, I didn't do it, Andy Tran did it. He went out and did all the work and all the video stuff. So I haven't done one myself. I will be doing that in the near future. You're not gonna strike sparks off the spine with this. It's just not sharp enough, but oh well. Uh, most ferro rods come with strikers. And you should be carrying a multi-tool with you too. And you can strike ferro rods off half the freaking tools in your multi-tool. So is it that important to be able to strike a ferro rod with the spine of your knife? I'm starting to lean away from not doing it. Because you will get some micro little dents in your spine if you do that a lot. Is it a big deal? Not really. It's not really going to hurt it. But use the right tool for the job. So I'm starting to use, have a, I have a lot of different things I can use to strike ferro rods with. Not using the spine of my knife so much anymore. But I can do it with a lot of my knives, just not this one. But I think this would be really good knife for splitting open some sort of big game animal. Uh, like Andy said in his video, an elk or something like that. Like, like we got a lot of freaking elk running around in Ohio. But I'm just using an example. But overall, really cool really comfortable knife I'm really looking forward to see what tops has coming out this year because i will be definitely visiting the tops booth at shot show 2015 and spending a lot more time there than i did the last time last time i didn't actually have the proper credentials that i was supposed to have this year i do have it so i'm free to do as i wish and nobody's going to bother me I'm going to spend a lot more time at the Topps booth. Hopefully it's not as busy and crazy uh, as it was last time. Maybe I'll try to get there first. But anyway, people keep asking me, what's your favorite Topps knives? I've just answered the question. All these knives, top notch. They're awesome. I love them. Uh, I will continue to use them. And these are the four that I'm not going to trade. Even though I liked a lot of the other ones that I've done videos on, uh, the... Steel Eagle 107E traded that to somebody. The Armageddon traded that. Uh, they were good. It's just like they weren't for me. Is they weren't. They didn't fit a niche that I had it on my knife wall well enough. So I moved on. Actually traded for some other tops. Some other ones that aren't in this list because they're smaller. But I also highly recommend is the Scandi Trekker and the MSK for neck knives. Uh, both of those are outstanding. And I know the Scandi Trekker was a little hard to get a hold of for a while. Hopefully, it's not so hard anymore. Other than that, uh, question answered. Now you know what my favorite Topps knives are. So definitely check out their website. Uh, I believe it is TopsKnives.com. Uh, Google is your friend. So if that's not correct, I'm pretty sure it's correct. You'll be able to find it. Always check their What's New tab because they like to throw out new stuff unannounced I, all of a sudden one day oh look we got this cool new knife nobody knew about 
So you got to kind of stay on top of tops because they'll sneak one in on you out of nowhere. But other than that, follow me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash preparedmind101, Instagram, Google Plus, and Twitter. And you can, any tops knives that are available on Amazon that are pretty good, I tend to put them on preparedmind101.com in my Amazon store. And again, I apologize to all the viewers that are overseas that can't deal with Amazon. Sorry, there's nothing I can really do about that. That's just the way the cards played out. But for those of you that are in the U.S., you can pick up a Bob relatively easily on Amazon. They're always on there. And depending on if it's Amazon carrying it or third-party sellers, stock seems to fluctuate. But when there's cool knives from Tops, I try to keep them on Prepare Mine 101. So definitely check that out. All right, guys. I got a lot of stuff I'm working on trying to wrap up the end of the year here. I got big plans for 2015. A lot of new equipment, a lot of new uh, ideas, a, a big upgrade in video processing. So I'm trying to up my game. And right now, just trying to close up the year, looking forward to SHOT Show 2015, where we're going to start this process all over again. All right, guys, Christian Prepared Mind 101. See you next time.